Hello people of the internet, my name is Adam, welcome back to Reaper. Reaper Reaper. We are going to be talking about audio things, audio recording. So you can press Ctrl T to make a track, or you can go track, new track, like that. To remove one, simply right click, remove tracks. Um, you can't do, de oh no you can do delete. I just learned something new. You can just click on the track and do delete which saves a lot of time. Now, we need to set up our audio input device. So, go to Preferences, and on Devices. Now, I'm going to be using um, ASIO for all, but you can do, there are a number of ways you can do this. Um, so you see under, the advantage of this is you can record different inputs. Uh, like I like I've been doing but for the purposes of this we can just go to wave out or direct sound can also be used um, for Mac it is something like local audio device or hardware audio device or something like that uh, don't use airplay so if you go into input device I have quite a few um, yours Decide what you want to record with. I am using this microphone right now. I'm using a Logitech USB microphone. Um, depending on what your sound card supports, you might want to increase the sample format. I usually do 24-bit just because if I'm um, if I'm editing the audio, 24-bit allows me to kind of stretch it and mess it about a bit. I also increase the sample rate a bit sometimes, but for the time being we're just going to use that and you see down here we've got input mono left this is fine if you're recording a mono input so now press this little red button and this will arm it to record and you will now see that this is picking up my voice so it's gone quiet it's picking up a bit of background noise from uh, the server i have by my feet but yeah quiet now noise so it's recording that and if i hit this button here or press Control R as it says, it will start recording my voice. Press stop, press save all, and then it will start recording my voice. So that's nice and simple. So now, what is the application of recording audio? Well, audio recording pretty much makes up the majority of audio production, as you would probably guess. But you, there's also MIDI, which we'll get onto a bit. If you're interested in that and not interested in audio, skip this video, look at MIDI, which will be the next video. I think I just said that, but I said it twice. Um, so, now, if you're still here, then you're obviously interested in audio. I'm going to set the BPM to 100. You don't have to do this. In fact, I'm not even sure why I did it. But if I press the metronome now and hit record, We've got the pulse there, so now we can keep in time with this pulse. So, there. Now I can actually hear the metronome over me. Stop recording. I can actually hear the metronome over me clapping there, which was slightly stupid. So it might be a little bit out of time, but I'm hoping it isn't. Uh, let's. So, oh, sorry, I didn't say what I just did then. Uh, if you just click and drag the end, you can shorten it like so. Or you can, if you want to get rid of a bit, you can just hover over it like this and press S. This will split it and highlight that by clicking on it and press delete. We've now got those claps. Uh, there's a little bit on the, actually, we'll talk about that in a second. Time being. See, those are in time with the metronome what we want could turn them off okay there we go so we've got that now we've got this bit of the start that we don't want here that little click um, so to get rid of that we can turn this off snap enabled and then we can click there for example press s and yeah this just means that we don't snap like we do if we were to do that if we were to do that 
see it's automatic wherever I click it automatically snaps to one of them which is good for the most part but if we were to do something like we just did then we can do it that way so now we've got rid of that bit at the start now if you hold if you highlight this and hold down control as you drag you can create a duplicate of what you've just selected so I've now got two of them it's an alternative to copy and paste and that is not lining up where I wanted to so we're going to turn that off line it up like so and then shorten that so that's there and now it should not snap to where we want it to not to worry we'll just leave it there we don't need it to snap really um could do that actually there we go um oh it's a good opportunity we can shorten that a little bit because we've cut off the start of that now so boom there we are now our clap lasts for longer like so now if we create a new track we can start to make a little kind of drum beat kind of thing what have i got that makes a good percussive noise nearby there's a hairbrush here there you go that'll do that makes a good percussive noise now if i hit record there got a little chop that off snap's not enabled chop that off We've now got a second percussive noise to go with our first one, which was the clap. So if we play that. We've got the start of a kind of drum beat thing going. So this kind of shows you, you can just kind of use whatever's lying around and make some sort of drum beat kind of thing. We could then emphasize the offbeat further by adding in some clicks. Those clicks didn't really come out very well, but not to worry. We can now, this helps us, yeah, sorry, get my words out. Let's, let's just see how that sounded. Yeah, those aren't very loud at all. So what we can do is we can use the volume and turn it up a little bit. You can also do that down here on the selected track. You see, it goes... So this is decreasing in volume. This is where it started. You can just double click to return it to zero. You can also right click, edit it here. So if we want to do plus eight, we just do plus eight. So we've turned that up now. Still a bit quiet. So we can get around that. We've got one good one here. This was nice and loud. You can just control click and drag it across. Not sure what it will be on Mac. I think it will probably be Alt click maybe to do the same thing. So the timing's not beautiful on that, but you get the idea of where of where we're going with our little uh, drum beats. Oh, I should do that. Yeah, right click and drag allows you to select uh, like drag and. Like I just did, so click away, right click drag, that's how you select. If you left click drag, you get this, which is completely useless to you. But you can just do right click, remove selection, or you can just press escape to get rid of that. Nice and simple. Okay, now, drag that there so it'll snap. Oh wait, that still doesn't snap, does it? Damn it, forgot about that. Oh well. Uh, actually, no, it will snap because we got this. There we go. So now we've extended. Our, uh, our little beat. So now we're going to layer one more thing on top of this and then I'm going to assume you've got the idea. Okay so I'm just going to show you one last thing and that is monitoring your input. So if you go down to preferences and if you want to switch I'm going to use this. This is an instrument input. Um, so I have a bass here. So you see it's picking it up, but you can't hear it. You might be able to hear it a bit through the mic, but it's 
picking it up, but can't hear it through the speakers. But if I go monitor input to do that, you just right click on here anywhere, go monitor input, and now. <laughs> You can hear it fine. So that's how you monitor an input. So we can record something. Maybe put a metronome on that. Maybe that would help. Like so. Sorry, there's a bit of uh, latency coming through. So I just completely screwed that up. Let me try that again. Um, hang on. No, wait, yeah, that's fine. Never mind. Okay, it's very difficult with that latency to get it perfectly in time with the metronome, but I tried. How did that sound? Not too bad. Um, the reason for the latency is because of the driver I'm using. I usually use the ASIO driver. If I go into preferences, I usually use the yeah this driver, and this doesn't have the latency on it. The issue is though that you can't hear it if I record with that. But you get the idea. That is how monitoring works. So you can hear yourself or your instrument or whatever it is you're recording back through back through the software so this is useful if you're doing like a live recording if you put some effects on which we'll cover later monitoring will come in very handy but thank you for watching please like and subscribe if you found the video helpful and let me know if there's any any questions you have and i will see you next time bye bye